some difficult times but we also can be grateful because we have the Lord on our side and we have we trust in him for eternal salvation good evening everyone so happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> this is um, the first time I've ever shared my testimony. So um, here we go. So um, there once was a time in my life that I was frequently overwhelmed by the shame and guilt of my lifestyle choices. Um, my struggles with alcohol began at a very early age. And I won't go into too much detail, but I will say that I put myself and my family through a lot. Um, after several attempts, failed attempts to give it up, I um, finally hit my rock bottom. It was a typical night out drinking and it ended with me waking up in jail with my second DUI. Um, that night I almost, I nearly lost my life. Um, I should not be here. Uh, and I almost took away my daughter's mother. And that is something that I was not willing to accept any longer. Uh, I had spiraled out of control on the freeway, took a metal fence post through my windshield, plummeted down into an eight foot canal, and into a tree at that and I got out without a scratch on me and some might call that luck <laughs> I call that God's grace yes and it was then that I decided that I I I couldn't I didn't have that right to take away my daughter's mother and I decided I was I was turning a different direction so I started uh, started my relationship with, with God, started working on my relationship with God, and I am proud to say that he has given me the strength. I'm coming up on almost 13 years sober. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it hasn't always been easy. And like the saying goes, I am, you know, I'm, I might not be where I want to be, but I am so thankful that I am not where I used to be. Amen. Amen. <laughs> In the house of the Lord. Um, I got a phone call about two weeks ago, and the pastor had asked me, can I give my testimony? And I said, I'll think about it. <laughs> and I'll answer you. I'll, uh. I'll give you a call. So, of course, I didn't give him a call. And I got a, a, um, a group uh, message yesterday, and it was an agenda. And I looked at it, and I said, why is he sending this to me? This don't apply to me. So, so I called him, and I said, Pastor, I didn't say yes. And he said, you didn't say no. So I said, okay, so I guess here I am, and I'm going to share my testimony with you guys. But before I do that, I want to, um, I want to read um, a scripture from Psalms 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set, me, he set my feet on a rock 
and he gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. So this, this particular scripture um, just really speaks to my soul because I feel like this is pertaining to my life. Um, so six years ago, I was in a relationship with, um, with an individual and um, it was a very toxic relationship. It was a very unhealthy relationship and it lasted probably about, probably about four and a half years. Um, I, I um, felt like this was the person that I was gonna be with for the rest of my life. Um, I was madly in love with them. Um, but there was many times that the Spirit of God spoke to me and said that this relationship was not okay with him. But because, of course, because I'm stubborn, I did it my way, and I chose not to listen to the Spirit of God. And um, because of that, I went through things, and there was consequences. Um, I neglected my family. Um, I neglected friends, things that were important to me. I started doing things um, that weren't of my character. Um, I started drinking every night because this is what this person did as well. And we did it together and we had a good time and we had a good time drinking. But after we drank, most of the time we would argue. Um, I dealt with this for several years and there was many outlets. God provided many outlets, but I still continued to stay. And um, it just was a long journey. And about three years ago, God actually removed this individual. He, um, he moved him, well, he moved away. Um, he told me that he was moving away because his mother was sick. And he moved away. And he moved away 3,000 miles. So he moved away across the United States. And I couldn't understand at first, I was broken. And I couldn't understand why was this happening to me. This was the person that I was supposed to supposedly spend the rest of my life with. Um, this was the person that promised me things and we had hopes and dreams, but this is not what God wanted for me. It's what I wanted. And um, I was angry at God. I couldn't understand why, but I also couldn't see that he was blessing me and he was sparing me and he was saving me from a lifetime of unhappiness and I had been unhappy for a long time already. And people seen it, but I hid it, and I hid it well sometimes. Um, and I just kept going through it. But God said, no, not no more. This is it. It's the end. And since you're not strong enough to do it yourself, I'm going to remove him for you. So he removed him. And um, since then, my life has changed. Um, I don't drink. I... Um, I don't even have a desire. It, it's, it's so crazy. Like, I just feel like he's just taken the taste out of my mouth. Um, I don't have a desire to do the things that I used to do. Um, I want to live my life for God. And I want to do the things that are pleasing to him. And I want to satisfy him. Um, so, again, this, this scripture just speaks to me. And when it says that he took me out of my slimy pit, and he placed my feet on solid grounds. He, he really did. He really showed me that he was molding me back into who he wanted me to be. And because of that, I am who I am today. And I just feel so blessed that I'm free. Well, Lighthouse, Lighthouse. We are blessed, highly favored anointed and unstoppable okay and for us to be sitting here tonight is a blessing you know um, I'm just going to cover a few little things God has brought me a long ways and I'll just start with uh, the third grade when Bible was in the schools Psalms 121 I will lift my eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. 
that scripture has brought me through a lot. Uh, you name it, I've been there. The drugs, the alcohol, you name it. But overall, I have, I can truly say that through all of the things that I've faced in life, and I will be 80 my next birthday, okay? That, that within itself is a blessing, you know, to even say and get close to that age. But, you know, uh, a few years ago, uh, living in Santa Rosa, I was on my way here to Vallejo to uh, visit my sister and brother-in-law. And I was hit from behind by a semi-truck at 30 miles an hour. I was sitting still in a small car. And I did not like small cars, but because I travel a lot to Vegas to see my son and grandchildren, I decided to get one. It didn't have it three months before I was hit. Uh, believe it or not, I have a crush valve in my heart. Uh, a few other things that happened, but I was laid up for about a year. But you know, God brought me all through that. And to be standing here today, and, and I'm saying that truck was loaded when it hit me, and I was sitting still. But through that, through all the trials and the tribulations that I've seen, I, I give all honor to God to be standing here tonight. Every time I got knocked down, he picked me up. Every time I got knocked down, he picked me up. And it's just a blessing uh, to be here. It's a blessing to have friends like you, praying friends, a pastor like Pastor Phil, who is truly anointed. And I can call him anytime and we can talk. But you know, uh, we went on a mission trip and that was, uh, uh, don't start nothing Tony. <laughs> don't you start nothing. <laughs> you know, but you know, I never thought, uh, I was in the military, uh, I jumped out of airplanes and uh, perfectly good airplanes as my brother-in-law say. <laughs> but you know, I never thought that I would see a place in the United States without running water, without electricity. And this mission trip that we went on, you know, it was, it was a blessing because we were able to bless others to get started again uh, with life, you know. And, uh, but uh, that was really an eye-opener. And we can be thankful. We can be thankful. As the pastor was talking the other day, you know, we got food in the refrigerator. You can get up 12 o'clock at night and open the refrigerator. Uh, we can go and hit a light switch, have light, you know, uh, go to a thermostat, turn it on, and have heat. You know, we are truly blessed. But I have a lot to be thankful for. And uh, to be standing here tonight is an honor. And uh, thank you, Pastor, for uh, allowing me to talk. God bless you. I am grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. I could go on and on and on about your words. Because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to thank you, Lord. Flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart.
gratefulness. The words are so simple, you know. It's just so simple for it to just come from the heart. It goes like this again. I am grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we've won. I could go on and on and on about your words. Because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord. Oh, flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart, his gratefulness. Grateful, 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 gratefulness. Grateful, 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 gratefulness. It's flowing from my heart. Grateful, 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 gratefulness. It's flowing from my heart. Grateful, 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 Gratefulness is flowing from my heart. Grateful, 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 gratefulness is flowing from my heart, flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart are the issues of my heart sing it again flowing from my heart flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart, who sing it one more time, flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart, his gratefulness. Hallelujah. No, we need to be grateful. I'm sorry. I do it all the time, don't I? But literally it says, flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart. We have so much issues. And if we just pour out our hearts to him, he will make it all right. He will change everything. We're going to go through everything we go through in life. It's not going to be easy. It never was and it never will be. But as long as we steadfast and we stand on him, then we'll make it through with his grace and his mercy. And we should be, that's, that's the greatness about it is that there is grace and mercy because we were not fit for it. But he saw that we, he saw it. <laughs> you know, I just, I wouldn't do it for you. Let me just, I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. Like I would not bear that weight for the world. 
You know what I'm saying? That's why it ain't even up to us. It was up to him. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful because, you know, some of us are a pile of mess. Huh? We got our stuff. You know what I'm saying? We got our stuff. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, well, I actually want to start off with the scripture, but I forgot my phone over there. Um, the scripture is First Timothy chapter four, verse twelve. Um, I know it's eleven. <laughs> It says, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. I've read that scripture who knows how many times and it appears. It just appears. I'm at the store, Hobby Lobby, and I see the scripture there. I'm at the library, and next thing I know, the scripture is popping up on my phone. Um, it's something about the scripture, but I think I want to bring to attention where it says, let no one despise your youth. As you can see, I'm a little younger than most. <laughs> um, what I mean by that is when people see me, they see an experience not that wise, um, or when I, I want to rephrase, when they see the youth, when they see people, when people see people that don't look like them, um, it's easy to judge or to um, perceive our beliefs onto them. Um, but be an example to believers in word in conduct, in love, means in your actions and what you do. You may say a lot of hurtful things by words because words hurt. Words are something that we keep dear to our heart. And with words comes forgiveness, which is not easy because for, with forgiveness comes trust. You have to trust that by forgiving that person, things are going to work out. And you also have to feel in your heart that you're not necessarily forgiving the action, but you're forgiving, you're forgiving that person as an act of love because that's what God does. God is love. God is amazing. And as testimony said earlier before me, God is merciful and gracious, and we don't deserve none of that. Because behind closed doors, I'm sure none of us would want a cap camera hidden there. Because no, no one wants to see what we actually do behind, behind closed doors. So it's important that even behind closed doors, you act accordingly. Because what you do behind closed doors is what you'll do in person. And by action is what we show who we are. Living in spirit, living in love, living in faith. Faith is what you cannot see. Faith is hard. Faith is trusting something that is not in front of you, but words. <laughs> and we know words can go through one ear and out the other a lot of times. So this scripture is really important to me because it's a reminder to me of how I need to live my life. Impurity. I have to live by truth. I have to live how I believe I would want others to see the joy and the happiness that I feel. I want people to see that because by seeing that, you guys are, why is she so happy? Why does she always have a smile on her face? Why is she always in good spirits? Well, it's because of God. <laughs> and I wish I could say that I'm pretty awesome and I'm pretty cool, but it's really because of God. Um, Pastor wanted me to share an experience that I had, I think, a week ago. Um, 
I've been walking this walk with God for a few years now, um, but I believe that within the last year or so, I've really devoted a relationship with the Lord. And that meant facing a lot of things I didn't want to face, that I was avoiding, the ugly, the behind closed door stuff. And I decided, you know what, I'm tired. I'm tired of living angry. I'm tired of living in in just filth and just feeling sorry for myself or, you know, get being short tempered because I don't know this one I can't. Um, feeling short tempered because what a person said offended me. I wanted to live as an example to others that love does exist. But the only way I could do that was by giving myself to the Lord. This evening, um, I went to an Elevation Worship concert that was out here a few weeks ago. It was one of the first services I've ever been to like that. It was amazing. <laughs> it was really great. I literally walked out and said, dang, there's a lot of people that love Jesus. And this, <laughs> I didn't realize how many people love God. I thought I was the only one. Um, but it was so amazing to see because it just reminded me of that, of the purity of that there is believers out there. There are people out there that want to live holy, that want to live close to the Lord. And you have to give yourself to him. So after this particular event, I was trying to feel the Holy Spirit. I was like, Holy Spirit, come to me. You know, try, I'm like praising him. And I'm like, come on, like I want to feel your presence. I felt it before. And it didn't come, but I had an amazing time. So I'm in my house the following night. Had a rough day. It was a Wednesday. It's my favorite day of the week because it's almost to Friday. But it's also one of the toughest because it's midweek. You know, it's midweek and it gets real tough. It gets harder to wake up on a Thursday morning. Um, and I just had enough with the day. I literally went home. Luckily, there was nobody home at the time because I really didn't want to see anybody or talk to anybody. Went straight to my room, had my dinner in my room. And after I was done eating, I went back to a song that Elevation Worship played and it was Lion. And I played that song and all I could do was, I was laying in bed and I just heard, get up. What are you doing laying down? Get up and show me my love. Show me what I've shown you. And so I got up and I'm open my hands wide. And I kid you not, the presence of the Lord was there. It was shining not only through, through me, but through out of me almost. It was almost like I'm in a dark room and all I see is light. All I feel is, is strays of light just beaming out of me. And I just started sobbing. I started sobbing and I started realizing this is why I love the Lord. This is why I do what I do and wake up every day and praise him and show gratefulness and show thankfulness because of this feeling. Because I'm having the toughest day, but that love at the end of the day was the most amazing thing that I could only get from him. I can't go home and get it from a sibling. I can't get home and get it from a kid. <laughs> you know, they're, they're innocent, but they're a little crazy too. You know, so the purity of love only comes from the Lord. And we're all living proof tonight that not only does he shine through me, but he shines through everybody here as well. And I'm just so grateful to be here. I'm so glad he's saying that song. I was super excited to have you here tonight. That's why I was looking forward to it. And I felt that. I felt every bit of that song, everything in me. Just take away everything that's in my heart and make it yours, Lord, because you do better with it than I can. So with that being said, thank you so much. Thank you for my family for being here. It was amazing that you guys are here to witness all of this. And thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. That was amazing. Thank everyone um, for um, having the courage to uh, to share um, their experience with the Lord, um, and it benefits all of us. Amen. And I'm going to take about ten minutes, 
and then uh, I'm going to share, uh, make a few comments, and then we've got some cake. And we're going to start off with this uh, Thanksgiving thing, right? <laughs> there are 144 times that the word thanks is mentioned in the Bible. Um, thanks, uh, appreciation, uh, being grateful. Um, it is, it is, but, but thanks is more than, than just words. It, it is actually this feeling that is extended to those you are grateful to. So it's, it's more than words. It's more than I, I say thank you. It's, it's, it's more, it's this feeling behind the words, right? That I, I, I appreciate you. I'm grateful to you. And, and in fact, in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, in, in verse 18, the, the writer instructs us to give thanks in every situation. See, everyone say in everything. everything. Right. In, in everything, in every situation to give thanks. Now, now, watch this. This is what the Bible does not say. The writer does not say in that particular passage to give thanks for everything. All right, so he, he's clear when he says to give thanks in everything, all right? He was extremely clear. He did not say to give thanks for everything. My mother, my father, my brother, sister passed away. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm giving thanks while I'm in the situation, but I'm not giving thanks for this situation. You follow what I'm saying? All right. And so in everything, I'll give thanks. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give thanks for everything because some things are real detrimental and they're bad and they destroy. But I can give God thanks in everything. I can give God thanks for uh, the lessons I've been taught while I've gone through tough times. Tremaine mentioned after she sung that, you know, life can be difficult at times, amen? amen? But yet we're still called to give thanks in everything. If, if you peel away all of the mess and all of the trouble, you can find there's something in that situation that I can give thanks for. In spite of my situation, no matter what it looks like, I'm still going to give God thanks. You see, I've made up my mind no matter how I feel. In fact, it doesn't matter how I feel. Right? I, I'm making a conscious decision. I'm going to give him thanks. When my mother passed away, I'm still going to give him thanks. When daddy passed away, I'm still going to give God thanks because it's due him. Not because I, I like it or I feel like it. It's just due him because God is good. Amen? And in fact, go with me to that verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You have your smartphones or your Bibles with you. 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, um, verse uh, 18. And in fact, I'll, I'll go up to verse 16. It says, Rejoice always, uh, pray without ceasing, ceasing, in everything give thanks. And then watch this, this next phrase. It says, For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Giving thanks in everything is God's will for you. His will, his, his desire, his wishes, his pleasure. This is God's desire for you, Isaac, for you, Tremaine, for you, Sister Ola. It is God's desire, his will for us to give him thanks, no matter the situation that we're facing. I'm, I'm choosing to give him thanks for this is the the will of God. What is the will of God? To give thanks. It's, it's more than a verbal statement. Um, I, I can verbally say, I thank you, Lord, but it is a demonstration of my gratitude by how I live my life. Uh, Vanessa touched on it today about living this holy life. When I live a holy life, I'm actually giving thanks to him. I'm telling him, thank you. All right, so it's more than just words, but it's included words, but it's a demonstration of my gratitude by how I live my life. What am I thankful for? What am I thankful? What are you thankful for, Pastor? 
you know, th there are wars and, and, and rumors of wars all around us, but we're not in one. I'm thankful. Amen. Uh, you and Brother Al, you went through wars. You know, and I, my, my father went through wars. And, and I hear about wars and rumors of wars, but well, I'm not in one. Hmm? I'm thankful for that. Glory to God. There are a group of people in Indonesia right now that suffered an earthquake in the last 48 hours. Killed many. But you know what? It didn't happen to us. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. It could have happened to us. <laughs> Back in 1989, on our way home from work in San Francisco, had to cross the Bay Bridge. It collapsed before we got there. I'm thankful. Right? I'm, I'm, it didn't happen to us. Glory to God. There are four students in Idaho and three students at the University of Virginia who've been killed in the past 10 days. But our loved ones who are in college, they're still here with us. So I'm very thankful. Hmm? Trouble happens all around us. But somehow, some, some way, God has insulated us. I, I know it's not because we've earned it. Right? I know it's not because we're so good and we're so perfect. He just made a decision. I'm going to insulate those folks down there in Benicia. Amen? You don't, you don't deserve it, do you? No. And so what he's done is he's provided something that we do not deserve. Right? It's like your kids have been bad, but you still give them candy. Hmm? Oh, my goodness. You don't deserve it, but he gives it to you anyway. There, there will be um, over 300 men and women in, in this area here in Vallejo Benicia area sleeping tonight, but it will not be in a house. There will be over 300 men and women who will go to bed tonight and what they call a bed. Hmm? They'll go to sleep, but it won't be in the house. There won't be any shingles on the roof. There won't be a door that you can open or close. There's no doorbell. There'll be no bathroom they can get in the night and go use. Why? Because they're homeless. Over 300. But all of us tonight... We'll, we'll leave this place, and more than likely, I'll say more than likely, all of us will go to a place where we have singles on our roof. Huh? A door that we can open and close, right? Access to uh, food. Amen? When, when Sister Ola does her outreach and, and we partner with other nonprofits, to have a bigger impact, and there's a nonprofit that will provide food for the homeless community, and 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 we we we've we've we we've, we've stood and we've looked at some of the things that they gather together, and 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 they gather all type of things, you know, uncooked meat, milk, and I'm thinking, how in the world are they going to keep that? How are they going to store that? But because they're so hungry, they just want it. We just get, we have to figure something out. We have to figure something out. So I'm thankful. Huh? That I, that I when I leave here tonight, I'll, I'll, I'll get to a place I can call home. I, I'm thankful that when I leave here, I can actually get in a vehicle. Right, that I don't have to pedal. Right. Amen. Amen. To, to to get to my home. I'm I, I'm thankful. So what am I thankful for? Oh my goodness. I'm thankful for a warm bed. Huh? Glory to God. I'm I'm thankful that He has saved me. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, 14 and 15, it says, those who, whose names are not in the Lamb's book of life will spend eternity in the lake of fire. I'm glad it's not going to be me. 
I'm glad that he saved me. Amen? That, that, he, that he literally wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life. I'm grateful for that. Not that I earned it, right? Because if you're like me, all of us were rascals. Any rascals? Oh, just a few? Oh, y'all, 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 y'all been saved most of your life. I was a rascal. But because of what Jesus did on the cross and because of my decision to accept him as my Savior, I get the awesome privilege to spend eternity with God. Listen, you may not have everything you want. You may not have the car that you want or the home that you want to live in or or the job. But if you look carefully, you'll find out that you have much to be thankful for. Hmm? I, I know commercials will drive this hunger and desire for more and for more and for more. Uh, Paul said this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. He says, I, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret to being content. I've learned the secret to being content. And the secret is I've learned to be thankful. No, no matter what I face, no matter what I feel like, no matter what's going on, I may not have everything, but God provides what I need every day. Glory to God. In fact, oftentimes, I've told you this before, when Ola and I, when we pray before we eat, we'll make this comment and we tell the Lord, Lord, we never go hungry because of you. That's the only reason we don't go hungry is because of him. And for that, I'm thankful. Glory to God. I'm thankful to be in this land of America. I know it's messed up. I know we've got issues. Oh, my goodness. But I'm glad to be living in the United States of America. In fact, the bottom 10% of the American household is five times richer than the global average income. The, the, the bottom 10% of American households are still five and a half times richer than the global income on the average. That's crazy, right? Oh, my, yes, we, we are blessed. We have so much to be thankful for. So I want, I want to close with this. As you are preparing the meal for your Thanksgiving, be mindful that it is a time for Thanksgiving. I know it's hard work. It's a lot of cutting up vegetables. Huh? Set, setting the table, getting the right plateware, wear, silverware, and you know, you think you you know, run out of oven space and and, and it's hectic and it's work. How how many of you are cooking Thanksgiving their their house? Yeah, I, it's gonna be hectic and, and a lot of work. But remember, it's Thanksgiving. So every every time you are tempted to get mad because you know something didn't go right with the turkey or whatever, be thankful that you got a turkey. Amen. Glory to God. As you are cleaning up after Thanksgiving. Whoo. All the plates, the forks, the pots, and the pans. And it seems like, at least at our house, we have to do dishes like uh, in shifts. Right? You, you, you think you got it done. Next thing you know, oh, there's more pots and pans and and then folks want to get some more food, and, and there's a tendency to get short-tempered. Don't remember, we're in this season of Thanksgiving. And so we're going to be thankful that we have a pot and a pan to wash. Amen? Thankful that we've got a fork and a spoon to eat with. Amen? Thankful that we have a home that we can host or, or go to. So we're going to be thankful, all right? No, no, no matter what it looks like, no matter <laughs> how that uncle or that cousin irritates your nerves, just I'm going to be thankful. 
Amen? Because I couldn't have what I have. And it's all because of God. And so here's my last thing I, I want to tell you. You have to communicate this to your family and especially to your children. And you have to communicate to them that this season is, is not about just meals, right, and a precursor to Black Friday. Black Friday starts on Thursday. Crazy, right? It's not about that. The reason they had the first Thanksgiving, those pilgrims, is they understood that they only survived that first year because of the hand of God. And so when they gathered together with the Native Indians and had this big feast, they realized it's because of the Lord. They, they were not going to make it without the help of the Lord. And you and I, we are not going to make it another year without the hand of the Lord. Amen? And so we're going to be grateful. Amen? So let's stand to our feet. And again, I want to thank all those that came out tonight, especially those that shared their testimony. That was an amazing thing. Oh, my goodness. Glory to God. And so we've got some cake in the back. I want you to get, you, get a slice. Uh, before you leave, thank you, Sister Ola, for singing, and thank you for my thing Sunday. Oh, you, huh? Yeah, yeah. I was really surprised. Oh my goodness, you were part of it, and you tricked me. You know that, right? <laughs> no, yeah. Vanna, Teresa, Isaac, Vanessa, thank you, thank you, Father. Um, this, this group in here, we came here tonight in order to, as this collective group, to just tell you thank you. Uh, it is your will for us to be thankful in all things. And so this Tuesday night, we, we say thank you for all that you've done. Oh, my goodness. You've kept us out of wrecks. We survived. God, Isaac and Vanna, they, 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 they survived. God, you, you, when we didn't want to act right, God, you, 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 you turned us anyway. You made us act right. God, we, we thank you for that. And so, God, I, I pray that every home that's represented uh, here tonight, God, when they gather um, on Thursday, God, that you administer to them that they would have um, the, the strength and the courage and the wisdom be, before they slice into that piece of meat to gather their family together and to tell you thank you. Uh, because it's only because of you that they have that provision, that home, that food. And so, God, we're going to be very careful to give you the praise throughout this whole season. Um, and as, as people look, and I think Vanessa said this, Lord, when, when, when people look at us and they see our attitude and our, and our, and our facial expression, they'll wonder, why, why are we this way? And God, we can tell them, it's all because of Jesus. It's all because, no matter what I face, the Lord is with me. And so, God, we honor you tonight um, with praise. We pray that you would uh, bless our time of fellowship as we uh, have cake together and as we travel back home, that you would get us there safely. In the name of Jesus, I pray.